for the final game of the night, KT versus SKT. And although a win here won't really help KT the, in playoff contention, they're pretty much out of it. It will make it harder for SKT to uh, hold that spot. That's right. And so in the first two games, we saw KT, Vagar, and Callista, Vans, and then Thresh in game one and Zareth in game two. So probably won't be banning that Zareth anymore, per se, without Easy Hoon there, although Faker still is a major threat on that champion. Odds are Faker in our current meta will be placed on more of a mage assassin as we've seen him in his past few performances. Callista will be removed from the champion pool one more time. Rek'Sai has been banned by SKT in all three games tonight. Now, the first two, they banned LeBlanc and Cassidy. They are not going to ban LeBlanc here, I would imagine. Uh, we'll see. Leave that champion rumble. up for grabs. All right. Oh, we don't get to see Barnes rumble. Doa, so sad. And there is Lissandra. Now we see KT getting a little antsy. And yeah, they should. Thrush still available as well, There's too. LeBlanc. They banned it because of the Lissandra. Uh, when Lissandra was banned and Baker didn't have a good counter pick for the mid lane, didn't want Nogne to have it. So SKT, we will not get to see Baker's LeBlanc tonight, but I think that was a clever ban by KT. Otherwise, they would have taken that first pick LeBlanc, I'm pretty sure. Well, Corky first picked by KT Rolster again, so I wonder what we're going to see Bang decide to go with. I mean, he could go with the Graves again, but after the way last game went, I've got a feeling they'll be a little bit hesitant about that. Well, he, it wasn't his individual performance, though. They could take Ezreal right now, try and deny Nogne. Love what we're seeing. Yeah. Ezreal Jarvan. Then they can counterpick the lane if they want to later with something like a Graves and run the Graves Ezreal comp that they could have run in the last game. And yeah, banging on that Jarvan is sure to uh, be pretty terrifying for KT as well. Leave score with. Basically, Lee Sin. Yeah, I wonder if Score will pull out the Vi again this game. Yeah, if they could. want to engage with Vi Lulu, that's definitely an option. But they will snag the Thresh. That's very important. Pickaboo has had some very impressive roaming with the Thresh in the past. Even we've seen Max Lantern first against him, and that, I think, is the better pickup right here. Take away the Maokai from Marin which could have been coming in, especially with this Jarvan, because that has been one of Marin's stronger champions. And now Marin, since they banned Rumble and Lissandra without the Maokai, oh man, I really think you take the Maokai. Yeah, I think Marin's gonna pick up that Maokai immediately if this Lee Sin goes through, and it looks like it will be locked in. So, yeah, I think SKT can't avoid picking the tree in the top lane for Marin, and I mean, geez, there's Tons of Mara and Maokai highlights this season. I think KT, because Lulu's still available and they're confident that Faker and Marin are not going to play Lulu this game, they want the Lulu into the Maokai as a bit more of a harass matchup in favor of Lulu. So they may be trying to bait the Maokai out here just to get someday an advantage due to that increased range and the harassment you can put down onto Maokai during the laning phase. But you know, if SKT were to go like Maokai Lulu too, again with the Ezreal, that's still a fairly low damage composition. I don't think they're going to take Lulu this game, though. Yeah. I would be really surprised. Instead, Pikachu will oh, be. I don't mind that. Playing one of his roaming specialists. Yeah. And we'll wait to see what Faker is going to select. Could be Ari right here, but he could be his Ezreal, and then we could see the Graves again. This sets up the Graves Leona lane, or the uh, yeah the Graves Leona burst lane as well. So I'll be. It's a pretty strong all-in combination should they choose to go for it. So top and bottom going to be picked last, or uh, top and middle rather, picked last for KT. Let's see what they go with. Hmm. I'm looking forward to the New Zillion in 5.4, yeah. He's so much fun to play too. The Q is like 10 million times better than it used to be. It's fun. I like the fact that it's a zoning tool now, so you yeah. can use it in a variety of ways. It does increase the flexibility of that champion. Oh, definitely. I haven't seen any Hecarim today. Bit Might of a see surprise. One now. And Hecarim Lulu for the massive engage. Yeah, oh, I think you take Hecarim the Ari. Ari. That is scary. If you don't take Ari here, 
Faker may take it later. And so that's what it'll be. Ekrim followed by Ari. So last pick, mid Ezreal, AD carry Ezreal. Who knows what's coming in? We'll Blake see. Karthus. Faker's Ezreal has been very good. <laughs> Faker's Karthus we have not seen for a very long time. Karthus is, is the, the new champion of choice, at least for Najin. Well, Tank plays it so well, too. I mean, yeah, this is Karthus. You kind of just like hang back, Q a lot, and then press R when your team fights. But hey, you can do it without dying. It's pretty good. I'll take you a long time on this decision. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Oh, really? Do it, Faker. Oh, man. Play that victor. He's got plenty of protection for himself with this composition. We've seen Kuro do it well. We've seen Coco do it well now. And will we see Faker perform on that pick as well? Korea is just locked in. Gunning to get Victor nerfed, Doa. I guess so. Well, it was fun while it lasted, right? <laughs> All the other teams at IEM are like, wait, we have to practice Victor for IEM now? <laughs> Damn it. Apparently you do. I mean, uh, yeah, both teams that are going have run a very strong Victor now. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, yeah, you do actually. <laughs> You're either going to have to ban it or play it. Get ready for Victor. You have a week and a half. Go. <laughs> V for Victor. So, Faker's Victor. This is interesting. I'm going to check and see if this is Faker's first professional Victor game, because I imagine that it is. Off the top of my head, I can't think of uh, ever seeing Faker play that, because the thing is, is when Victor was played, last time we saw it in Champions was before Faker came on the scene, if I remember right. It was way it's back It's been a when. really long time, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, because that was during the very first SK Telecom team iteration with, like, Reaper and stuff, and that was pre-Faker. Indeed. It's been, it's been many moons since our, our last spat of Victor here in Korea, or even professional scene altogether. Yep. Well, here we go. KT with an opportunity to take a big win against SK Telecom, and SKT needs a win to stay high in the standings. Let's see who can do it. Time to get in the game. And here we go. Fans definitely uh, getting into this one. And it's, it's been a while since we had a SKT versus KT match that went the distance like this. Is it going for speed? <laughs> it's all alone, <laughs> time of need. Well, Maybe. it's not so alone, really. It's had two other buddies so tonight. <laughs> well, this is going to be Faker's first professional game on Victor. Exciting stuff. Always fun to see how Faker handles these champions compared to his peers, especially since both Coco and Kuro have been doing very well. So I am intrigued. Maybe hard for him to keep the Ari and the Hecarim off of him. That's what I'd be worried about at this point in time. You know, a lot of, he doesn't have a lot of mobility, and he's dealing with a Hecarim Ari Lee Sin combination. So his yeah. positioning is going to have to be extremely good, especially since he lacks peel. Tons of engage to keep people occupied, but Ari will be able to get out of that cataclysm. Faker's going to need to be very careful about his uh, W placement when he gets the upgrade for that later on. Because it's going to be pretty hard to land a lot of damage onto Nogne, I feel like. Oh, this is interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, looks like they're getting Marm Blue buff, actually. Okay. Right at level one, and then have him TP down to the bot side so we can farm safely with the blue. Meanwhile, we do see Krug starts from both sides. Ezreal will be heading to the top lane. Now, they're not going to get a freeze as a result. So with the lane swamp initiated by SK Telecom, they don't want to freeze the wave. This is interesting. Yeah, SKT clearly coming into this with a pretty yep. well-developed plan. They, they chose to leash for Bengi instead 
right there. And now they're heading immediately into the bottom side. Even though Marin took a bit of damage, he does hit level two as a result of that. Catches some minions right away and took the blue buff. So very interesting lane swap start from SKT, but this is designed just to help Marin farm and push the wave. Notice he's already up seven CS to zero. The thing about Hecarim is he's not a strong lane swapper. This is true. He gets really easily zoned out. You know, when you look through SK Telecom's games this season as well, too, Marin's Maokai has just been absolutely incredible in, in so many situations. And so no matter what happens on the rest of SKT, a start like this is going to do a lot to make sure that Marin's able to be that unkillable tank in the late game. Yeah, I agree. Wow, Faker with a major poke on Anagne. Okay, sidestepping that one quite easily as well. Yeah. The speed boost from the Q. Well, no, I definitely agree with you, and even though I think we've seen some higher points on Lissandra from Marin, because he's been able to really hard carry on that champion, he's been the best consistently on Maokai. It's yeah. really rare, like you're saying, to see him have that bad game on Maokai. Well, Maokai is one of those good, like, workhorse champions, you know? You just get the items and you just get in the back of a team fight and sit there. Ooh. Oh, thank you. A little bit low? Will be a, it will be hard for him this game because he has to be very careful about which target he selects if he's going to try and lock down Nagne and have Faker blow him up or not. Meanwhile, someday, looks like he may be able to get a little bit of farm here under the turret, but without that blue buff advantage and because he, he took the, uh, the flask this time, it does make it a little bit harder to reliably get that CS without the extra little bit of damage that can help you out in terms of farming. I'm actually surprised someday isn't playing this lane a little bit more aggressively considering the sheer volume of sustain that he has. Hmm. Bang actually going to recall right now. So they're going to give Marin a slight CS edge. Are they going to transfer lanes right now? Just lane swap it and send Looks Maokai like they, top side. Looks like that's yeah. what they should be doing. Really interesting lane swap from SKT. We don't usually see the lanes switch back so early. Well, it's giving someday a lot of time to catch up in CS now. Yeah, he's still he's still at half though. So if this actually does give Marin a boost in that laning phase, so just wait till the blue buff runs out, then swap back. And Bengi well, the and score going head to head right there. Bengi again just toying with score at his Raptors. Nice thing for Marin is that he's able to come into lane with a massive item uh, boost as well too. So we'll right. be able to bully someday out there pretty easily. Right, and his combat stats just so much higher thanks to the fact that he started Doran's ring instead of that crystalline flask. Yeah. So this is really advantageous, and he catches the wave just in time too. Wow. SK Telecom immediately transitioning on the recall into this dragon. What what a great early game plan from SKT. You know, we saw a really smart early game plan last game just like this too, but in the end, the composition just wasn't doing it. You know, now they've got this going with a composition that's legitimately scary. SKT, man, is all over the early game these days. I'm, I'm really impressed with how well they're controlling objectives up until about the 15 minute mark. And it's all due to Bengi's style of jungling right here. Trying to skirmish a little bit early and also the fact that Faker has had so much pressure on the mid lane. He's been out trading Nagne heavily in this matchup. And that means that Nagne can't respond to Bengi walking into his jungle. It's, it's a style of play that uniquely works with SK Telecom because you can rely on Faker to be ahead. It's been interesting. Uh, there have been some articles written, I think on uh, Gold Pretend, the article written that was about the difference with SK Telecom in terms of statistics between uh, Faker and Easy Hoon. And Faker just gets this ridiculous gold lead by 10, 15 minutes into the game, starts to grow that gap, and he just plays so aggressively Yeah, as well. It's, if I remember those stats right, generally by the end of the game, Easy Hoon it's the one with the edge, but it just reflects kind of the different way that SKT uses each of these mid laners. Well, also, it, it's longer games too, usually with these games. Also, the fact that people just tend to focus Faker too in the team fights. He becomes much more of a target for enemy teams. Uh, I think that there's probably an interesting statistic between how many times Bang dies in a game between whether Faker and Easy Hoon is playing. I have that theory, Duh. Huh. <laughs> That's a good question, I wonder. Look that up. Tier start for Bang. So 
Now we're gonna be a little bit lower damage early on. SKT really looking to scale up right here. And Faker, look at this. He's actually diverged from the, the builds we've seen previously. All the other Victor players we've seen have gone for the Hextech core upgrade first, not Faker. All about the harass, all about pushing the lane early. Goes for magic pen boots. Wants to dodge Ari's skill shots, which will help out with his Q, of course. He will get that extra boost to speed that way. A very different way of playing mid lane Victor. This is yeah. Kind of a kind of a philosophy where, you know, rather than just pushing really hard with an upgraded E, you can just do a little bit more damage with all of your abilities. Yeah, and especially that Q really and also gets a take, nice boost. Yeah, take less damage too. The speed yeah. against those Ari if you can dodge those skill shots, going to be very helpful in terms of having favorable trades. Meanwhile, we do see Nagne without boots so far, so a lot more difficult to avoid the death ray coming in. There we go, Faker taking that out. And then. Bit of a roam. There is a ward there for Someday, but he's not going to be able to use that to see them. Looks like they're going to try to steal this blue buff for Faker. Yep, reading the timing on that, so. Yeah, they'll get it. it right over. There you go, taken away. And interestingly, Doa, this is also part of this complete strategy because what happened in this game is that blue and red were taken simultaneously for SK Telecom. I mean, effectively coming in. So yeah. uh, they had the earlier chance to go to their blue buff, take that one, and then come around on the later second respawn. There's a kick. Yeah, they kick Martin to the wall. Martin just advances back into them, pushes score away, and it's going to be an easy escape for him. Marin managed to reposition just in time to avoid being kicked back into Hecarim. Had to burn the flash to do it, but uh, Score used his to get in, so pretty even trade when things are all said and done. Faker, man, continuing to just really harass Nagne. And when you get that shield from the Q, like you do with Victor, I can see how this is kind of a yep. rough matchup for uh, Ari if you've got a mechanically gifted Victor player. Yeah, it's very interesting to see Faker playing it this way. It's just very different yeah. from what we've seen to everybody else. We haven't seen that emphasis on Victor's early game with extra Doran's rings with the early Sork shoes. Now the poke seems like it really kind of uh, deters the all-in that we see Ari players go for a lot of times too. You can't really do it if you're at half health, can you? No, you certainly can't. Here's dragon number two, KT. His wise to SKT's tricks, they get the flash out of Pickaboo. Yeah, Pickaboo shouldn't have been there with the way the waves were pushed up in mid and bottom. So it does pay for it with the flash. No one able to give him any assistance, especially with Bengi up in the top side. But look at the CS difference between Someday and Marin right there. And that's a consequence of what we've seen happen in the early game. Someday trying to go for that early home guards. He wants to have that big engagement and use his speed to translate it into damage during the next fight, but he has to be in base to do that, and Marin has just put so much pressure on his tower that it's been difficult to make that work. Marin is gonna get peered into a turret, but... Uh, that's right, I'll use. Someday in a lot of trouble now, though. Counter Engage comes in, and that's first blood going to SKT. That's with Dragon, 30 seconds away. Nagne motioning up towards the top lane, but he's not gonna get an opportunity to get any kills here. Someday will be able to get back to base, though, in order to possibly home guard into this fight. And Marin isn't able to take down the tower because yeah. he has to back off due to Nagne's roaming. Shaparaj. Oh! There's a Krug. He stole the Krug. Wow, they had a turret. Not a turret, they had a ward there. Oh, Ben gets grabbed by the uh, death sentence, so Arcane shifts away. Oh, here we go, on to Fixer now. Teleport coming in for SKT. Fixer on the run, they're gonna turn it around as the teleport comes in for KT as well. Solar Flare goes down, Arrow's still in trouble, but here comes Score. Bang able to do a lot of damage from the outside of the fight. Where is the mid lane? Baker came down and so did Bang. A flash from Bang to get away. Bengi rather was coming down, but it looks like it's not gonna be any kills, but it will be a dragon for SKT. Is there anything KT can do to stop this? Someday, no ult, he can't come over the wall aside from Flash, and that's two dragons now for SK Telecom. Wow. Baron right there using his advantage that he has earned over the course of this lane, coming in right after having bought a Glacial Shroud right into bottom where all that 
attack damage is, absorbs most of the blow, and Bengi and Fake are go to work on the drag, getting it to 50%, while SKT just pushes him back, disengages, and takes, takes the uncontested dragon. Again, SKT with such clean objective control. And Faker going to get another blue buff right here. There are wards around there, but there's a Leona and a Jarvan. Nogne's going to have to get lucky to get this one. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now Faker did upgrade his E. His Hextech core, yep. And it was E, right? You can see from the little explosion after the laser goes through. <laughs> I love the laser explosion. It's pretty neat. Oh, Pikaboo not loving getting picked too much. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Bengi coming in. Can he counter? There's a knockup on the score. Nagne over the wall, though. Nagne can pick up a kill here, but one comes in for Bengi. One on each side. So SKT managed to make it equal, at least. And you got to ward with your jungler in that situation. If you have to put that risky ward, Bengi, you need to be a little bit closer. Ooh. Nagne poked out by that E and Faker still putting a lot of pressure onto this lane. He knows with score out of commission for a moment that he can really be aggressive. Jeez. And look at that. Wow, Flash, he's going in on a Nagne, the storm chasing, but I think Nagne just barely gets out of it. You know what's also interesting, though? We didn't even mention this. Faker has Ignite. That's not something we've seen really on these victors, especially into an Ari matchup. Yeah, it's always been a defensive summoner. Yeah. Cleanse against Hecarim and Ari would be, in fact, the, the more safe choice by a long shot, but Baker wants to play aggressive, and we've he wants seen. to continue to harass Nogde, and wow, I, I'm very surprised to see that. Baker pretty confident. He's a confident guy. I don't know if you're aware of this. He's a, I suppose he he's thinks with, sure his, of with his Q and his level two boots that he's just gonna dodge every charm, so to hell with the cleanse. I mean, can't really argue with it so far. He's I been can't. able to do it. <laughs> But I mean, uh, we've seen, yeah, the cleanse, sometimes a ghost for these victors, but Faker just going, he's bloodthirsty, you know? Wow, look what at this does. blue control. Blue to blue right there. Pickaboo on the roam once again. As Ezreal just farms under the turret, he's been able to, to... Oh, yeah, they got it. Wow. Faker this just is so brutal buffs. for Nagde. Yeah. Well, I think SKT is doing a good job of identifying the threat that Nagde well, poses in. This is really hurting him. The worst part about that, Doa, was that because we saw what happened earlier with KT when they checked that blue buff with the Lee Sin Q, they didn't even have the timer on it. Yep. So it's just all the edge to SK Telecom at the moment. There's really not a whole lot they can do. Faker will just go ahead and check out the river, see if he can find anything. They're going to lose a bottom turret for their roaming soon enough. But oh, it's oh. pretty natural. Oh, they're going to get in. Oh, but the Lantern takes him to safety or does it. Solar Flare comes down and Bang is right there. Score, though, they see him with the ward, so they don't chase. Hit a couple walls of the box. Why not? Might as well help uh, Fixer get some use out of that alternate. They're nice. What a what a bunch of bros. SKT. What a pal. Yeah. Good guy, SKT. Not going to give you any kills, Holy but they'll smokes. run into the box. Look at Mara and CS lead. We're reaching like flame levels almost here. The flame horizon is 100 CS. <laughs> yeah, but it took him a little, you know, even took flame longer than this to hit that 100 15 CS minutes, mark. 50, nearly 60 at 15 minutes is extraordinary. It's about as but good as it gets. That was a clever little trick of a lane swap there from SKT. It was completely designed to get Marin ahead, to punish the Hecarim pick, and it works really well with Maokai. It's something that you can pull off. So major props to SKT in that situation. They made a decision, an active decision to lane swap and then not freeze the lane in top, but give him this advantage instead and then quickly swap back. So what can you say? Worked extremely well for them. I figure still maintaining about 20, 30 at CS lead over Nagne too. Hasn't been too bad. Well, Score hasn't been able to find the kill on the Faker in the mid lane either. One of the major issues in this game is that this victor has been pressed so far forward but has been unpunishable due to the constant presence of Bengi and Pickaboo in the mid lane. 
They have left Bang a bit high and dry, but at least he's kept up in terms of CS. You notice Bang too going for those cooldown boots, so he's able just to spam those abilities out and keep the wave off his turret. Yep. Also build up to that uh, Mana Mune a little bit quicker too. Here we go. Score finally trying to do something right here, but he's not going to be finding too much luck considering Faker does see Pickaboo right there in the river with him. And we've almost reached Dragon Time yet again. SKT with a decent amount of vision around the pit. Anyway, KT guarding their side of it anyway. This is a great time for SK Telecom to make a move. Yeah, we'll see. Their composition, the edge that they have should be potent. We'll see if they can do it. Here we go, Dragon coming down and SKT going to try to make this their third dragon in under 20 minutes. They've been so good about their dragon control all series long. KT clearing out a few more wards, and here we go. We may have our first real team fight. Teleport coming in. They do grab Bang. There's a box as well, but SK Telecom all over them already. Two kills picked up. They're going to turn right back onto that dragon. Arrow getting some nice shots into Pickaboo. Nagne threatening just a bit. They're going to wait on that dragon. They do. Oh, actually, Arrow managed to snag it. Nagne providing enough of a distraction. Yeah, no smite right there, so the sheen and the rocket from Corky do pick up the dragon. Not the end of the world, certainly. Still getting those two kills, and Baron continuing to barrel down into the top lane and magnify that CS advantage, so it doesn't actually really matter for SK Telecom. Obviously, two kills in the Dragon would have been nice, but they don't lose anybody in the process. Yeah, they still got the kills. So let's check this out again. Great flank from Pickaboo right there. Able to get on top of score immediately. They lock him up with the Cataclysm and uh, hit him with the Chaos Storm. So much AOE with the True Shot Barrage as well. They're trying to zone out Nagne, and we're... Okay, we don't get to see the Dragon Steal we're again. <laughs> Faker's pushing the lane, man. He's here with the Death Ray. Much more entertaining. Right. And the Morello Namicon. Let's see what he goes back and buys. Yeah, this is our first victor with Morello Namicon, too. This is a really different build. Uh oh, I feel a dive coming on Nagne, taking a lot of damage. There's a shield from Fixer, but Nagne still losing nearly all of his health. There's that Chaos Storm. Wow. So annoying. No kidding. Being able to move around there. <laughs> Can't quite get the execute. With you the can Ezreal ultimate. You can only have so many fakers in a game. You know, you're limited to one, so that means the two shot barrages <laughs> from your other teammates may not be as accurate. That's right. That's actually a Casper regulation. You can only yeah. have one faker in a game. Otherwise, things get too out of hand. You, you know, they were trying to clone him. Casper said no. They're like it's just too strong. Even we have to admit that <laughs> one faker is enough. Uh, you, it's one of those things where you just can't play God, though. You don't know the consequences of your actions if there's more yeah. than one Faker. What would this world come to? It's true. Just because you can't has to, I mean, the, clone Faker doesn't mean you should. Jurassic Park taught us that. <laughs> the international scene may not be that competitive, but it does have to be at least somewhat competitive, right? And it just <laughs> imports a bunch of Fakers. <laughs> a Faker for every team. Sorry, every mid laner everywhere. <laughs> Good job's in trouble. Now that turret still up for now. SKT rushing to the top lane. Solar Flare. Fixer flashes out of it. Bang B still coming in. And there's a teleport from Marin as well. They catch Fixer. Already used that flash. That'll be an easy kill. Good Manages play, to though. play at the end. Yeah, I agree. And Nagne coming in onto Faker. Faker flashes ahead. He's in trouble here. Faker turns. Does he get Nagne? He does. Wow, Faker. What do you know? He's really good on Victor. There's a double kill. Things Faker does. What 1v1's in our What the Ari. hell was that? I can't believe he managed to pull that off. I want to see the after replay, After Nagne hit the charm on him right, right there. He was been maxing his Q second, so he got enough of the shield. Of course, he would max the Q second on Victor. Does have that Q upgrade already finished. And just 1v1s. You know what? That wasn't enough for the hell of a double kill with the death ray. Yeah. I'll just take this one, too. See, and that's they get why. And the tier 2 mid lane turret, or tier 1 mid lane turret, rather, right afterwards. Faker doesn't need any defensive summoners. Are you kidding me? Ignite all the way. I thought he was dead for sure, Dawa. <laughs> me, too. Me, me too, man. I mean, I want to see the replay. Okay. 
So we'll get to it. We will get to it. Good engage here. EQ, Cataclysm, pretty standard stuff. Great play, though. So let's watch what happens to Faker. Okay, happen? he gets completely caught out. Does manage to land the death rate. Flashes up the follow-up, though. And then keeps the Chaos Storm right onto him, hugging the edge. Wow of the gravity field. You saw how he zoned the gravity field and the chaos storm to just sort of trap Nagne because he knew the alt uh, cool, the alt charges had already been used. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Yeah, the term next level is applied <laughs> to Faker a lot, but that was next level. It was very good. Very good victor play. Yeah. I like the, this victor better than I like his Azir. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Wow, I could just watch that play all day. That one's going to be on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this point with this kind of lead should be a pretty routine cleanup for SK Telecom. Seems that way. There's a lot of magic resist on the side of KT, but Bang has not been doing too badly for himself either. Interestingly, did go for that Cutlass a bit early. Not really sure that that's going to be the best he went for, for it him. Yeah, he went really for it early. really early. Right after before. the tier, actually. Yeah, not really sure what that's about. Uh, probably his thinking was that because Pikachu was roaming so much that he just wanted some sustain because he was probably just getting hit by a lot of rockets and uh, harassment in the bottom lane, considering Pikachu's pretty notable absence and the fact he was trying to, d to defend under the tower as best as he can. Bang just got his Muramana completed. Probably that was the logic to it. Of course, he will eventually build it into a Blade of the Rune King, most likely next, considering he has that dagger. Time to get Faker another blue buff. He just finished his death cap. Faker's had like six blues already this game. Yeah. Yeah, there's not been a lot of time where Faker hasn't had the blue buff. Wow. I, I don't know. It's, it's not often where you can just look at a player and, and the only thing you can he do also has is, wow. 267 CS. Yeah, at 24 minutes. At 301. <laughs> Things Faker does. <laughs> I think I think this qualifies. Oh, that was a good two shot barrage. Decent amount of damage through the team as they set up for this dragon SKT. Zoning well, and here comes Mara, and he's going to twist advance onto Nogne. Nogne doing a little bit of damage in return. But SKT, all they want to do is zone. Pickaboo throws out the Zenith Blade. Barn gets charmed again. And SKT continuing to zone. This would be Dragon number three. Well, KT is so scattered at this point, it's really unlikely they can contest this Dragon just because. Score's ready, man. He's going to try it out. Can't do it. Has to use a flash to get back out of the pit. They're going to use this opportunity to try to take mid lane, but look at this. Fixer gets jumped on by Pikachu. Damage coming in as well. Marin in the back line's a little bit low, but here comes Faker. Can he do some damage? Bengi there as well. He still hasn't used Cataclysm and a lot of escapes. There we go. Bengi coming in. Oh, he gets feared. There we go. Still, I thought he was going to be able to catch Arrow, but Arrow waited a long time to use that Valkyrie. Yeah, he really had a, got a lot of patience right there. Used yeah. his summoners first. It's amazing so that he could SKT, hop out of it. I thought they were going to get more than that, but only one kill out of all that. Ah, yes, the old crab stun. <laughs> Make sure those pesky crabs can't get away. Now they're just going to try and set up a pick right now. There we go. Uh, and they get it. Nogne in a lot of trouble here. He's going to go down. Another kill for Faker, and Arrow completely caught out, too. Why not? Give that one to Faker as well. Give everything to Faker. He's 5 0 1 now. <laughs> sure. More kills for Faker. Yep. Hey, if there's anybody on that team I'd prefer to give kills to, it's gonna be it's gonna be Faker. And let's give him another blue buff as well, too. Someday he can only watch and neigh in a sad ma manner. Like I, a I really think SK Telecom's game plan early on was beautiful. And just the, the lane swapping that they had made sure that they got such an edge across the board, and then they continued to compound that edge with more and more and more blue buffs, constant taking away, Faker just pushing relentlessly into Nagne. And it's not even that KT has played this game badly, it's just that SKT has taken advantage of absolutely everything so far as a team. And that domination has earned them this large gold lead, large dragon lead that we see so far. You know, you mentioned earlier wondering how many times in a game Bang died when Faker was playing as opposed to Easy Hoon. Well, Bang has zero deaths right now. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's playing Ezreal, but 
still, you know, you can see the amount of pressure that Faker takes onto himself and takes off of Bang in these games. Yeah, at least in the team fighting phase is what I'm wondering, mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking. Because in the laning phase, that's absolutely that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I do think that Bang, I think you're I think you're absolutely right, basically. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so I thought I was right too. Good to know. Let's see if Bang can give a few kills <laughs> to prove us both wrong. But I I think we're right. Yeah, yeah, ten to two right now in kills overall. Nice six thousand gold lead. And SKT, you know, again in that situation where they don't really need to pressure that much, they can just try to set up more picks. They can just make sure to keep all their buffs in order, keep the lanes pushed up, and uh, keep trying to farm those dragons. Fight the fights when uh, KT gives them the opportunity. They keep just trying to set up these picks as well. Playing with that vision around the Baron. Now they may just actually, uh, there we go, finally uh, going to clear, clear out the last remaining ward. Uh, Oracle's Lens. Tons of upgraded trinkets already for SK Telecom. Double Oracle's Lens. Uh, they missed a crucial ward in the river, though, so KT does have an idea of where they were coming from. Obviously, now they know they're in mid lane. That ward's kind of funny. I wonder if they're going to check. That's a pretty common ward spot, too. I'm just gonna try and do it. All right. Actually. Oh, turning around, back into the brush, but uh, it's gone now, oh, Doha. Oh, the timing. <laughs> yep. Now they can get the pick they always wanted. Yeah. And one of the crucial things about playing Hecarim that we haven't seen from someday, because he hasn't really had any opportunities, you need to make time for yourself to stand in your base so you can use the home guards. Yeah. Because if you can't get that home guard teleport engage, Hecker just isn't quite as useful. It's so core to his kit to be able to get that extra damage from the movement speed. But somebody has been forced to play defensively this entire game. He doesn't have any time to stand in his base and wait for that engage wow. to happen. Marin doesn't take damage from turrets anymore, apparently. Or forces. Or, or Hecker, I guess, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got all that healing, too. You can see yeah. Proc is passive. Next minion, get a little bit of health, get a lot of bit of health thanks to that spirit visage. Well, that certainly works. And uh, I don't think that someday is going to be able to get there in time nope. to stop the turret from going down. No, he won't. SK Telecom playing the dance and methodically taking those objectives. Dancing the dance, the dance of dragons. Dragon up in a minute. George R. R. Martin would be proud. That's right. A dance of dragons. <laughs> Who knows when the next book's coming out, though? Could be five, six years from now. Who knows? Maybe never. Maybe he'll just quit and just go for the yeah. TV series instead. Maybe. Well, they're diverging so far from the books now. You, you gotta wonder. I don't mind. SKT trying to set up another pick here. Oh, Nagne. They just wanted to get him to activate that ult, I think. That's going to make it a lot more difficult for KT to contest this Baron. Right. And by blowing the ult there, they don't have to worry about Marin getting pulled back into the rest of the team if he does, in fact, use a W on it. Faker actually just going after someday right now. I guess so. Wow, nice amount of damage drop there. And the Solar Flare is such a much lower cooldown than Ari's ultimate as well, too. So then the Spirit Rush, that's a, a really good trade if you want to trade that ult for the other ult. Still just chasing around. Pikachu getting quite tanky Whoa. himself. Warden's Bale. It's a bit crazy there. Flash Zenith Blade. Yeah, Force Fixer's Flash, though. Yeah. All right. Someday comes back. There's a home guard used. There's a teleport used. Marin used his as well to get to the mid lane. But now SKT, they're going to activate that dragon. How much of a disruption is Marin going to be in the back line? Score. He wants to come in and try to steal this. Can he do it? No. Faker gets it. Now Marin goes into the back lines. Faker looking for some opportunities to do damage, and he finds it big time. Marin, wow, this is why you don't let Marin have Maokai. It just makes it so easy for SKT to do the rest of it. Wow, <laughs> twist in advance, follows the ultimate from Hecarim, and Marin still going. Now on to Arrow, and Faker diving the turret, using those shields to pick up yet another one. Is this going to be an ace? This is insane. Marin all the way into the base. They're two turrets deep. They're going for the ace, and Bengi gets it. They live. <laughs> this is amazing. Are they going to recall wow. in the base? 
so low across the board for SK Telecom. Bang just methodically <laughs> taking down the turrets right now. The rest of his teammates diving as deep as they can. They still get two towers. I don't think I've seen anyone go that many turret levels deep against an enemy team since like Mach Noon was <laughs> dirty farming in base. <laughs> Way, way back in the day against uh, Long Panda. Yeah, very bold, but ends up paying off. Let's take a look at that one again. Extended fight right here. They already burned the teleport engage, and so we see the choke fight coming down. Varen already just zoning out the entire back line at the moment. Follow up with the Chaos Storm, and Baker able to chase with some of these cues with his <laughs> movement speed. There's the Twisted Advance following all the way through the turret, but Marin has such a massive lead that he's that easily play. able Gets behind to move arrow. on through. And then Bengi tries his head. Marin, not a lot of damage right now, no. even if he does that percent HP. So the one Dragon Lance. <laughs> <laughs> well, some days, like, you're not supposed to be in here. There's two turrets up yet. It's going to be an easy Baron now for SK Telecom. I'll take that without any issue at all. That's KT, kind of starting to style a bit on KT. Yeah, Sonya's now finished for Faker's Victor as well. So just in case. Yeah, just in case anybody actually thought they had a chance of killing him. Now all hope is dead. Yeah, he's like, well, I get a needlessly large rod and a little bit more stacking AP out of this, so, you know, why not? I really feel sometimes that SK Telecom just uses Faker to oh. maximize fear and despair in their opponents. KT coming in I has would. a very solid victory in game two. They're like, yes, maybe we can do it. But no. No, Faker. No, you can't. Yeah. Well, Marin, you can just 1v5 now. All right, mid turret going down. SKT looking to finish this one off. Pickaboo comes in, Solar Flare slows down Arrow. Arrow sticks around to try to do some damage. There it gets. All right, Faker's just going to get more kills now. Score really not prepared to deal with the amount of damage coming in from Faker, so. Are you ever prepared to <laughs> deal with the damage coming in from Faker's Victor? Apparently, we're learning that you're not. You know, I'd say this is an adequate first game, professional game on Victor, though. Yeah, yeah, I'd say he's doing decent. <laughs> Please. It's like if you ask me, well, should Faker play Victor again after this game? I'd be like, yeah, no, why not? <laughs> It's okay. It seemed to work all right. Yeah, they can, they can use it. SKT just steamrolls their way through yet another turret, probably yet another inhibitor. Faker, uh, man, or Zonias. I don't think he really needed that one. I think the death sentence was actually a little bit wide already. What a great way to play around Faker's strengths, though. Just dominating the blue buff game yeah. right off the bat. Bengi playing a selfless jungler, handing over the blue buff to Maokai early. And this game was, the story was written in the early game. For a Jarvan here. to not take a single blue buff, because I don't think he did. He didn't, no. That's pretty well, amazing. Well, no, he took, the, he took the second one, actually. Did he get the second one? He okay. took the second ah, one. because they stole the then, other one for Faker. Yeah, walked yeah. over to take the blue buff for Faker. Still, usually Jarvan, you kind of need that earlier blue buff a little bit more with some of the other junglers. And some efficient Jarvan play. Wow, those wolves did not stand a chance. <laughs> Well, Wolves versus Lasers. I know it's uh, it's been close in matchups in the past, but yeah, actually, Death Rays uh, tend to tend to kill Wolves. Wolves versus Death Rays. It sounds like <laughs> oh, it sounds like it's time for Nogne to get destroyed. It also sounds like a sci-fi original feature or something. Arrow on the run. Marin still in the middle of everything. Baker comes in, just blows up Fixer. Well, another turret. Do you think Faker's going to get MVP? I've got a feeling that he may. And I've also got a feeling Faker just flashed into the base. It was, uh, a, it was a zoning ult. It was a zoning ult. We've seen, seen some of those in the past. <laughs> I think that uh, that 1v1 versus Nogne is certainly a super, super play material right there, too. I still like the Prey Hecarim. I mean, that was, that was good, the too, kiting. but I'm, I'm going to go with Faker on this one, though. Man, the 1v1s from Faker, you can't beat those. Guarantee you that's going to win. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, score nearly okay. getting taken out by another Death Ray, and Arrow dodges that Solar Flare. Marin 
again going deep as SKT wants to finish this off. Backing away, I think they just want another fight. Someday comes in, Marin actually getting a bit low here. Nice ult from Someday, but Baker still full health. Lots of mana yet. It is a kill for Arrow. Nagne doing a bit of work here as well, but at the end of the day, the double kill isn't even enough. Faker gets grabbed with the death sentence, but not until a lot of the damage is already out for KT. And there goes another turret. The Nexus is vulnerable. Faker even killing all the turrets now. There's the Zonias. Faker had time for the cooldown to come back. They do get the kill on the Benki. But Jeez. Faker comes in with Bank for the double. Helps Bank pick up the triple, the ace, the match. It's a 2-1 victory for SK Telecom. And Faker, 10-0-6 at the end there. Wow, yet added onto the list, guys. Added onto the list of stuff that you can't let Faker play. <laughs> As if it wasn't big enough already. It's not enough bands in the world. Even if they gave all six bands to whoever's playing against SKT, Faker's still going to have champions to own you with. Yeah, oh, just such a great team-wide performance from SK Telecom during yeah. that game. Marin's lane swap early was very critical to their success. And the way he played out the lane got that massive CS edge by 15 minutes. Uh, 